seven Colombian youths were together taken by Jesus Christ to see both heaven and hell. Hear their account of the glories of heaven and the misery and torment of hell. The Fourth Testimony God bless you brothers. When the Lord took my hand, I saw that I was standing on a rock, and that an angel was standing behind us. We began to go down through a tunnel at incredible speed. I quickly turned around and saw that the angel was gone. I felt so afraid. I asked the Lord, Lord, where is the angel? Why isn't he still here? The Lord said, he cannot go where we are about to go. We continued downward and then stopped abruptly, as in an elevator. I saw several tunnels, and we went through the one that my sister Sandra spoke about, the tunnel where people were hanging on hooks by their heads, with shackles on their wrists. The wall that the people were hanging on seemed to be infinitely long. Millions of people were hanging on it. They had worms all over their bodies. I looked up ahead and saw that there was another wall, exactly like the other. I said to the Lord, Lord, there are so many people here. Immediately, a scripture verse came to mind, one that I did not recognize. The Lord told me, hell and shoal are always hungry. Proverbs 27 verse 20. We left there and soon arrived at a place we called, the Valley of the Cauldrons. The cauldrons were full of boiling mud. We got close to one of them. The first person that I saw was a woman. Her body floated and sank with the boiling mud, but when the Lord looked at her, she stopped moving and remained suspended in the mud with the mud up to her waist. The Lord asked, Woman, what is your name? She answered, My name is Rubiella. Her hair was full of boiling mud, and flesh hung from her bones, which were charred black from the fire. Worms entered through her eye sockets, came out through her mouth, entered again through her nose, and exited her ears. When the worms could not enter, they simply made a hole and entered other parts of her body, which caused her indescribable pain. She shouted, Lord, please, take me out of here. Have mercy on me. I cannot continue like this any longer. Make it stop, Lord. I cannot stand it anymore. Please have mercy on me. The Lord asked her why she was there. She said she was there because of vanity, which was also the word written on the metal plate on her chest. In her hand was a common-looking bottle, but to her it appeared to be a very expensive perfume. Rubiella had to take the bottle, which was full of acid, and spray it all over her body. The acid caused the flesh that she sprayed to melt, causing her great pain. She shouted to the Lord, Lord, please, have mercy on me. I cannot stay here any longer. Just a single second Lord. I am not saying that it is a sin to use perfume, but the Lord told us that the woman was there because of her perfume, as the word of the Lord tells us in Deuteronomy 5 verse 7, You shall not have other gods before me. She was there because her beauty, perfumes, and vanity were first place in her life. However, the Lord Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. He must be first in your life, that is why she was there. With sadness, the Lord looked at her and said, Rubiella, it is too late for you. Worms shall be your bed, and worms shall cover you. When the Lord said that, a blanket of fire covered her. As her body was being consumed in the cauldron, she suffered horrible pain. We then moved far away from there and arrived at a place with giant doors. As we approached them, they opened for us. On the other side we saw a giant cavern. As I looked up I saw different color lights moving like a cloud of smoke. Suddenly, we heard music, salsa, ballonato, rock, and different kinds of popular music that people listen to on the radio. The Lord motioned with his hand, and we saw millions and millions of people hung with chains by their hands. They were jumping wildly over the fire. The Lord looked at us and said, Look, these are the wages of the dancers. They had to jump wildly up and down to the beat of the music. If salsa was playing, they had to jump to its beat. If any other kind of music was playing, they had to jump to that its beat. They could never stop jumping. But worse than that, their shoes had six-inch spikes on the bottom. When they jumped, the spikes pierced their feet. They never had a moment's rest. When someone tried to stop, demons immediately came up and stabbed them with spears and cursed them saying, Praise him. This is your kingdom now. Praise Satan. Praise him. You can't stop. Praise him. Praise him. 
You have to praise him. You have to jump. You have to dance. You cannot stop for one second. It is unfortunate that many of the people there were Christians who knew the Lord, but were in nightclubs when they died. You may be asking, where does it say in the Bible that it is wrong to dance? In James 4 verse 4 the word of God says, Do you not realize, you adulteresses, that friendship with the world is enmity toward God? Therefore, whoever determines to be a friend of the world becomes God's enemy. Also, in 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 to 17 it says, Neither love the world nor the things in the world. Whoever loves the world has not the Father's love in his heart, because everything in the world, the passions of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the proud display of life have their origin not from the Father but from the world. And the world with its lust passes away, but he who does the will of God remains forever. Remember, the world will pass away, all this will perish, but the one who does the will of God stands forever. My friends and brothers, while leaving that place, we saw what looked like bridges that divided hell into different sections of torment. We saw a spirit walking over a footbridge. It looked just like a doll that people have on earth, people call them treasure trolls. They have different color hair, with an old man's face but a child's body, and no sexual parts. Their eyes are full of evil. The Lord explained that they are spirits of loss. This spirit had a spear in his hands and was walking pompously on the footbridge, like a queen or a pretty runway model. As he walked, he stabbed people down below with his spear. He cursed them saying, Remember the day you were outside a Christian church and you did not want to go in. Remember the day they preached to you and you did not want to listen. Remember the day they gave you a gospel tract and you threw it away. The lost souls tried to cover the areas where their ears used to be. They replied to the demon, Shut up. Shut up. Don't tell me anymore. I don't want to know more. Shut up. However, the evil spirit enjoyed it because of the pain it caused them. We continued walking with the Lord. While looking at a large group of people, we noticed that one man was shouting louder than any of the others who were burning there. He was crying, Father, Father, have mercy on me. The Lord was not going to stop to look at him, but when he heard, Father, he trembled and turned around. Jesus looked at him and said, Father, you call me Father. No, I am not your father and neither are you my son. If you were my son, you would now be with me in the kingdom of heaven. You are sons of your father the devil. Immediately, a blanket of fire came up and completely covered the man's body. The Lord told us the story of the man's life. The man called him, Father, because he had once known him. He used to go to church and listen to God through his word, and he had received many promises from God. So we asked, What happened Lord? So, why is he here? The Lord replied, He was living a double life, he lived one way at home, and another at church. He thought in his heart, Well, there is no one that lives close to me, not the pastor or any other brother, so I can do whatever I want. But he forgot that the eyes of the Lord are set on all our ways, and that no one can lie or hide from the Lord. The word of the Lord tells us, Don't lie to yourselves, God cannot be deceived. Because everything a man sows, the same he will harvest. Galatians 6 verse 7 This man was suffering a thousand times worse than the others. He was receiving a double condemnation, one for his sins, and one for thinking he could deceive the Lord. Today, people try to rank sins by their gravity, they think that homosexuals, thieves, and murderers are greater sinners than liars or gossips. But in the Lord's eyes, all these sins have the same weight and the same pay. The Bible tells us, the wages of sin is death. The soul that sins will die, from Romans 6 verse 23 and Ezekiel 18 verse 20. My friends and brothers, I invite you now to accept Jesus' invitation. Jesus will extend his hand of mercy to you if you repent. The word of the Lord tells us that mercy will be given to whoever changes his ways and repents. It is much better to believe now than to wait and find out the hard way later. God bless you. We will continue this again next time for the fifth testimony. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment and suggestion below. Please don't forget to subscribe and click the subscribe button. Thank you and God bless you always.